have dates open January 23rd and 30th, February 6th, 13th, 20th, and 27th. So I'm going to pass this around. Please make sure this clipboard makes it back to the back table when you're done with it. yet either so you still have time but Wednesday uh, is when we need those reports so you can email those to Joyce and John um, and get those in also our St. John annual meeting is coming up January 19th Wednesday at 7 o'clock if there is inclement weather we will be um, having it the snow date on January 23rd after our worship service there um, and you can see what the agenda items will be there. Our normal business plus uh, St. John Constitution changes will be reviewed and voted upon. Thank you to everyone who uh, donated for the noisy offering last week. We collected $61 towards the building fund. Welka will be meeting this Wednesday, January 12th uh, at 1 o'clock. So please take note of that. And then today we are going to be undecorating after church. Um, so if you are able to stick around and help with that, please do so. Um, and these poinsettias up here, Beth has asked me to let you know that any of you who have uh, ordered poinsettias to please take them home today. If you don't take them home today, they will either be gifted to somebody else in the congregation or they will be put in the trash. So um, we just want to let you know that's going to happen today as well. Otherwise, today is the baptism of our Lord. We remember our own baptisms daily, daily rising, dying and rising in Jesus Christ, and we will hear more of that in our scripture readings. But for now, I would like to invite our council president, John Pister, for a temple talk. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I just want to uh, note that there is a, a big card out here on the table um, that was provided. Uh, by the way, if you open it, uh, if you go to the front, and look, there's some really nice pictures on the front as well. So uh, that is for a neighbor of ours, Paul Weber, uh, who has been ill, and we're just uh, giving him some words of encouragement, passing along a nice note to him in a card. So please. Um, Please uh, put your name on that card. Perhaps it'll be here um, for this week, maybe longer, I'm not sure, but uh, please take a moment and sign the card. Uh, today I'm here to talk to you a little about, um, about something that uh, many of us know about, uh, and yet maybe we don't know a lot about. Um, when we make our offerings, um, in the past we've used little envelopes, and there was a little line on our envelope for something called benevolence. Uh, benevolence, um, to me, was always a bit of a mystery, like what is benevolence, where does it go, what does it do? Um, and um, right now we aren't using uh, very many of these envelopes, so that may just simply be something that kind of goes out of our mind. We don't really necessarily think about benevolence. So um, for this week and next week, we're putting a little bit of a, a reminder out and a little bit of an emphasis out on benevolence, and I thought I'd give you just a little bit of information about benevolence. In addition to supporting our Northeast Ohio Senate, who currently, uh, at least as far as we are concerned, is definitely helping us in the process of um, helping us support our interim pastor, as well as assisting our call committee in finding a full-time pastor. But um, part of our benevolence monies is, is a, a way of supporting our Northeast Ohio Senate. But also, our benevolence helps uh, with organizations such as 
Lutheran disaster response. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about this particular organization. Um, Lutheran disaster response recognizes that every disaster is a local one. Because of this, um, we believe or they believe that every response needs to be rooted in the community. We work to accompany that community from immediate relief through long-term recovery. In our international work, we partner closely with companion churches and other Lutheran and ecumenical relief agencies to make sure that local needs are being addressed and met. In the United States, we work through our extensive affiliate network and other partners to address the same concerns. All this means that our dollars um, experience the greatest amount of stewardship for resources and maximum impact for response. So that means by using all the resources they can, our dollars are well spent and um, are well taken care of. Lutheran Disaster Response tries to help the church continue to be church in the midst of disaster, following Christ's call to bring hope and healing to our neighbor in need. Some key areas of their work include providing emotional and spiritual care for people who have been affected by a disaster and for leaders who respond to a disaster, coordinating volunteers through local affiliates, assisting refugees in a holistic way by meeting the varied needs of the community, promoting disaster risk reduction by helping communities build their assets, thereby reducing effects of likely disasters in the future, and provi uh, providing long-term recovery efforts by addressing unmet needs months or even years after a disaster strikes. So this is a group of people that goes in and helps people right away, and they help them for a long time. We are a welcome partner because we respect the perspectives and strengths of others. So help me this, um, this calendar year as we remember benevolence, how we can help um, our neighbor, whether our neighbor close here in Ohio or far away by um, putting some extra offerings in this week and or next week for benevolence. Thank you.
Good morning and welcome again. For those of you in person here at St. John Lutheran Church and for those of you joining us online this morning or on FM radio, welcome in the name of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the baptism of our Lord Sunday where we hear once again the baptism of Jesus and we remember our own baptism. One reminder to all of you, if you do not have a communion cup, make sure you have one before we get to communion today. We are, uh, because of the COVID uh, spread with Omicron, we are going back and doing communion at our seats until further notice. So please take note of that. If children come forward during children's time, we ask you wear your mask when you come up here. Otherwise, we just want to remind the congregation to please be safe during the week um, with your loved ones and for yourselves. Keep yourselves as healthy as you can um, as we try to get through this pandemic. I invite you now to stand as we begin with the Thanksgiving for baptism found in your bulletins. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your Holy Spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. We continue with our gathering hymn, hymn 84, in our Lutheran Book of Worship. Hymn 84, verses 1 and 2, brightest and best stars of the morning.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this morning comes to us from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. A reading from Isaiah. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Etha, Ethiopia, and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight, and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Our New Testament reading is from Acts, chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them, and they had, re they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon them, and they received the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, 
John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus had also been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, saying, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Do I have any children today who want to come forward? That's all right. That's all right. Elizabeth's downstairs eating away. I know she's watching this, so you're good. But for all of you today, just a little thing on children's time, what I was going to talk to the kids about, both here in person and online. You might notice we have water up here, right? We call this a baptismal font. Some of the kids, you may have been baptized long ago when you were just tiny little babies. Some of you here may have been baptized even as adults. Um, And one of the things we always remember with baptism, whether we're a baby, a child, a teenager, or an adult, is that every day we remember our baptism. And we do that every time we get up in the morning, whether you're brushing your teeth or getting a shower or washing your dishes. Before you do anything, we always take a little water and we make the sign of the cross on our foreheads and we remember the promise God has made to us in Jesus Christ. That we are his beloved daughters and sons and that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. And so in baptism... We also remember we have the light of God within us and we are sent into the world to share God's love and forgiveness with others. And so as we remember that today, as we go forth about our week, let us pray. Holy and gracious God, in Jesus Christ, we are your beloved daughters and sons. Thank you for the promise you give us in the waters of baptism and your word that nothing can separate us from your love. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that enlivens us and guides us to believe and trust in your promise. We thank you for these children, wherever they may be, that you would watch over them this week, that the power of your spirit may anoint them in such a way that they go out and share the good news of God's love and forgiveness with other people. Be with their families and be with them wherever they go and keep them safe. And continue to keep them centered in their faith in you. Pray us all in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we gather on this second Sunday in January, remembering the baptism of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and remembering our own baptism into God's unconditional love and forgiveness, mercy and grace. It's interesting, as I was thinking about baptism this weekend, I was thinking of all the baptisms I've done in 13 years of ordained ministry. The youngest child I baptized was six weeks old, and the oldest adult I baptized was 92 years old. So you can never be too old to get baptized. And every time I say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and I pour the water upon 
that person's head. I am always amazed and taken back for a minute. Because I am always reminded that baptism is God's work. I'm just the messenger, right? Always God's work. God claiming this individual with a new identity, centered in Jesus Christ, drowning out the old creature, the old Adam in us that wants to rebel against God, and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. That is, the work of the Holy Spirit strips away all that is not life-giving in our lives and brings us to faith to have new life each day. Now, I don't know about any of you, I'm too young to remember my baptism. My baptism was a year and a half after we were born. Um, but I remember Elizabeth's baptism. And I have to share the story um, hopefully my former bishop is not watching this this morning. If he is, <laughs> he'll get humor out of this. Elizabeth was baptized two months after she was born. And I remember the day, it was on Christ the King Sunday. And you have to picture the scene. There is my former bishop in his regalia with his bishop's hat, with this big, long beard that went down to here. Her godparents were both pastors. They're on one side. And then there's Matt and I. And Elizabeth's in this beautiful family gown. How many people have a family gown you've passed down for baptisms that you've had your kids wear, probably? We have one of those. Hers was pretty slippery, as I remember. Matt was baptized. His sister was baptized in it. We get ready for the baptism, and the bishop goes ahead and pours, um, pours the first handful of water. But instead of getting Elizabeth's forehead, he gets her eyes. And there went my sweet, quiet child, <laughs> who starts screaming in front of everyone and gives me this look, why did you let this scary man do this to me? <laughs> so we think, okay, Bishop, We'll give you that one. Maybe you'll get it right on the second try. He goes for the second <coughs> scoop of water. He says in the name of the sun. And it happens again. <laughs> Poor Elizabeth is sitting there just furious now. She was kind of asleep, but now she's fully awake with water on her forehead and her eyes. And so he quickly hurries up and gets to the Holy Spirit in the name of the Holy Spirit, right? puts the water, gets her forehead the third time around. And he finishes the baptism saying, there's this old medieval saying, each time a baby cries in baptism, the devil is fleeing them. <laughs> we just quickly got out of there, right? <laughs> Afterwards. Now, that doesn't seem like a great saying right after baptism. But when I think about that saying in the context of Luke's gospel reading for today, it actually makes a lot of sense. Why does it make sense? The community that is gathered in Luke's gospel today around John, they gather with expectation a strong belief that someone is going to deliver them. In their hearts, they wonder if John the Baptist is the Messiah. After all, he's baptizing people, which was not an uncommon tradition in Judaism. It is said that in Judaism, seven days before folks who are converting to Judaism, they have a what would be equivalent of a baptism, not as we understand it, but a purification rite, where if the man is being circumcised, he would be immersed in the bath. Same thing with the women. And it wasn't until they had that done, and then they went through the rituals of converting to Judaism, were they allowed to have access into the temple, to even enter the temple. So that would be like us having church here 
And if I'm not baptized yet, right, it'd be like John saying, well, nope, Emily, you can't come in here yet. <laughs> right? Pretty heavy stuff. Pretty important stuff. But to be clear this morning in Luke's gospel, John's baptism for repentance was not sanctioned or authorized by Jewish law. So he took a tradition, but he added a little something to it. They didn't authorize it. They didn't sanction it. But if we remember right from the beginning of John's birth, John the Baptist is a prophet. One preparing the way for the Lord, who was also a teacher, who taught that this baptism he was doing was for the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of sins. But if you think about John's baptism for a minute, it's more human-centered than it is about God. Like, what do I need to do to be forgiven, right? So I'm going to do my steps kind of deal. So he's calling attention to the importance of being forgiven, but what can we do, right? Human things to cancel their own debts with the Lord. John the Baptist recognizes this and makes two things clear today. He makes it clear that one, he is not the Messiah. Did anyone pick up on the the gospel reading today? He's like, don't point to me. (laughs) I am not him. He points to the Messiah who is coming. He says, I will, but he will, he, meaning Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chafe he will burn with unquenchable fire. I've always been struck by that verse. Because I'm not a farmer, but what I understand from some of the farmers I know back in the Midwest who grow wheat, there's always this outer husk on the wheat known as the chaff, right? Now, when the wheat is growing, The chaff is important because it protects the seed inside, right, the grain. But once it's fully grown, it's no longer usable, right, no longer life-sustaining. And so that that, that husk has to come off the grain, right? And so um, back in that time, you know, they would have taken the the wheat, they would have thrown it up in the air. (laughs) It comes down, the husk starts blowing off. And they would go through this process of removing the the outer husk. And then whatever husk was removed, if it came down, they would would burn it, right? And then they would take the thresh and they would would separate out the good grain from what's not usable. And I was thinking about that in terms of why John the Baptist would say that in the context of baptism, but again, this makes sense to me because think about it for a minute. If we were not baptized and we did not believe in Jesus Christ, there might be a lot of things we can make our own God or go our own way, and that might seem like great, right, in the short term, but long term, spiritually, it's not going to bring you life, right? It's just not going to. You ever meet the people who are always like, I'm never happy. <laughs> it's like, even though they, it seems like they have everything, they're still, they still say something's missing. And so when we talk about this image, I correlate it to baptism, a daily dying to one's own self. The old creature in us that continues to rebel against God is drowned And we are raised to new life in Jesus Christ. Our new identity is in Christ. And the gospel we hear each day by the power of the Holy Spirit, we hear the gospel of Jesus Christ through the lens of faith. Trusting in God's promise fulfilled in Jesus Christ, that baptism is God's work in Christ and that we as the people of God are invited to share in. 
And I always say it's God's work, but God invites us into the work, right? So when a child, baby, adult gets baptized, it's not just the responsibility of the parents, right? Or the sponsors. We all nurture that individual in the faith, right? You just had a bunch of young students confirmed this past year. You all have a part in that. Sometimes I was always shocked when I was in the ministry, as I'm in the ministry, when I would do some of these baptisms, I, would, I have one person come to me and say, I want you to do my child. I said, what do you mean, do your child? Well, you know, that water thing. We had a lot of teaching that, that particular baptism. Not just for the parents for the sponsors, but for the whole community because baptism is an ongoing thing. It's not a one-time event, right? We're invited to nurture the faith and to share the good news of Christ with present and future generations to come. And also in that, we are also called to take our baptisms and to connect that with our everyday lives. Right, whether we realize it or not, whether you're a teacher, an office administrator, the guy who picks up garbage down the street, the farmer, the musician, parent, child, student, you name it. Our calling by God who calls us by name is connected to those things we do every day. Our faith guides that in how we serve in God's kingdom. Baptism is God's ongoing activity within the individual who's baptized and within the faith community. That all we, though we are not yet what God intends for us to be, we are kind of a, a piece of pottery, right, that's in the works, so to speak. That we are sanctified by the Holy Spirit, centered and marked with the cross of Jesus Christ, who is our Redeemer, Savior, and Lord conquering death in the grave and death and resurrection. What is really at the heart of today's gospel reading is Jesus' identity, right? We know we just heard the Christmas birth story of Jesus' birth, and we know hindsight on our end, he is the son of God. But baptism, his own baptism, really seals the identity of who he is and why he's been sent into the world today. And did anyone notice in this gospel reading this morning there's a difference in this account of his baptism than the gospel of Matthew and Mark? Well, if you go home later and you look it up, Matthew and Mark, John baptizes Jesus. John is nowhere in the picture in this one. The verses that have been omitted from the lectionary reading today, John's already in prison <laughs> because he spoke the truth against King Herod about remarrying his brother's wife. Herod didn't like that, so he put him in prison, and we know that didn't go well later for him. But Luke's purpose, I believe, is to point out once again this is God's work, right? Doesn't matter how Jesus was baptized, <laughs> but that God recognizes him as his beloved son with whom he is well pleased. And that the Holy Spirit descending upon Christ and all the other people gathered there is truly God's ongoing work that sends Jesus Christ into the world to be among the people, to save God's people, and to deliver them from sin, evil, and the devil, bringing us new life in Christ. Baptism grounds us in our identity in Jesus Christ. In those baptismal waters of grace, we are marked with the cross of Christ, sealed and anointed by the Holy Spirit, and we gather, as those people did long ago, with hope and expectation 
In other words, as baptized people of God, we expect God to show up, <laughs> right? Even as we watch everything that's going on in the world right now, we are not people in despair. <laughs> we trust God's there in the good, the bad, and even the ugly. And we are called to listen for God's voice that says, you are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. With you I am well pleased. We are sent into the world to live out God's unconditional love and forgiveness in Christ and that every vocation we serve in this life is connected to the promise God made to us in baptism that sustains our spiritual lives, nourishes our faith. Those baptismal waters of grace wash over us again and again. And God in Jesus Christ calls us to live out God's unconditional love and forgiveness, not only in our lives, but as we live in our relationship with our neighbors, whoever they may be. We are changed, renewed, made whole again, forgiven of our sins, debts, and trespasses. And we receive a new identity in the one who is greater than us. One who is greater, John the Baptist, who is coming and will come again among us. As we hear that small voice of God rise upon the cacophony of other voices in the world, our God, who in Jesus Christ proclaims, you are my beloved child. With you, I am well placed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Take a moment of silence to reflect on God's holy word. We continue with our hymn of the day, found in your blue hymnals with one voice, hymn 697, hymn 697, verses 1 and 3, Wash, O God, our sons and daughters. Please stand. <laughs> Continue on page 64. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us boldly profess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made, responding, God of grace, hear our prayer. By your Holy Spirit, you gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service, that all people know they are precious in God's sight. God of grace, hear our prayer. You reveal your love and power through water and the spirit. Guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution. Secure access to clean water for all and protect the land from drought and flood. God of grace, hear our prayer. Establish among the nations the blessings of your peace. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates who risk reputation or retaliation for the sake of mercy and justice. God of grace, hear our prayer. You protect us through the fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that we will not be cut off from you by illness or despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. Bring comfort to all who are in need, especially Wendy, Leonard, Landry, Rachel. Fran, Jackie, Paul, Caden, T.C., Larry, Gwen, Gaylord, Charlie, Steve, Patty, Keith, Coralie, Ken, Irma, Kathy, Richard, Lenny, Sophie, Sharon and Steve, Susan, Veronica, Dwayne and Pat, Betty and Larry. God of grace. We are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and justice seeking. God of grace. You sent your spirit to bring wisdom and discernment to all who are in leadership. We pray especially for the members of our church council and our call committee. That your spirit give them wisdom for discernment as they work together to search for a new pastor to shepherd and guide this faith community. God of grace. You created each of your saints for your glory. We give thanks for those who you have called by name into your eternal embrace, especially Rosemary, Harrison, Mary, Carl, Stanton, and Dawn. Comfort us in grief and release us from fear. God of grace. Since we have such a great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Share the peace with one another and our family units. Peace be with you. Thanks for helping today, Trevor. Peace be with you.
This is the time we normally would collect our offering. Thank you to all of you who share your time and talents here at St. John Lutheran Church. Thank you for mailing your offerings in or for dropping them off today in the donation box or sending them in electronically. Your help is God working through each one of you to help bring about the kingdom of God and to help with the ministries both here in our faith community and beyond. So let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table and nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our light. Amen. Amen. Invite you now to do so. Please take your communion cups. As you're able to do so, the first layer has the host, the wafer. The second layer has the grape juice. We continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Now I'll offer you to take your wafer, your host. This is the body of Christ which is given for you. Amen. And with your grape juice, this is the blood of Jesus Christ, which is shed for you. Amen. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation, which you have desired for the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive God's blessing, Almighty God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Before I give the final hymn, just a reminder of those who are helping with the undecorating, please take your poinsettias before you leave today. Because it is raining outside, I will not be outside today to greet you all. Um, again, because my daughter is not vaccinated, we are taking extra precautions. Um, so. Before I give you the final hymn, have a blessed week. Keep yourselves safe as you go forth from this place. With that, our sending hymn is 693, verses 1 and 3. Hymn 693, and your blue hymnals 1 and 3. Baptize in water. love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a blessed week all. Mm -hmm.